Hi everybody, hope you're doing well. A key argument that classical economists tend to make against the use of active fiscal policy when it comes to dealing with uh, low economic growth or recession in the economy is that if the government has to borrow money in order to spend, then they could well crowd out the private sector. We're going to look in this video what that actually means and how the private sector can be crowded out with increased government borrowing and increased government spending. So, um, first of all, you would have watched my video, I'm sure, before about how the governments borrow money and how they issue bonds. When it comes to facilitating spending by needing to borrow money, so of running a budget deficit, taking out a public sector net cash requirement, adding to the national debt in the economy, the government needs to sell bonds. So in the UK, they'll be selling gilts or treasuries. Uh, and what they're doing, basically, is replacing this IOU, this piece of paper, with cash. And who buys them? Well, ordinary people buy them. Consumers buy them, firms buy them, banks buy them, other governments buy them. So what the government is basically demanding are savings in return for this piece of paper. And savings, another name for savings, if you think about it, are loanable funds. They are funds by which loans can be made. So, when the UK government or when a government decides to spend money by borrowing, they are demanding more and more loanable funds out there in the market. So what I've drawn here is the market for loanable funds. The price of loanable funds is just the interest rate. So savings that are transferred into loans, the price is the interest. We have the quantity of loanable funds out there in the market. We have the supply of loanable funds upward sloping. The bigger the interest rate, the more you can imagine supply of loans will be. And the demand is just downward sloping, uh, which makes very much sense. The lower the interest rate, the more you can expect demand for these, uh, for these loans. When the government actually gets involved in this market and demands uh, people to buy its government bonds, it's demanding savings. It's demanding more of these loanable funds. All right. So more of the money used to make these loanable funds, which shifts the demand curve for loanable funds to the right from D1 to D2. More pressure is put on these savings that will be transferred into loans. Increasing the demand for them, which increases quantity from Q1 to Q2, but more importantly, it raises the market interest rates from I1 to I2, okay? And the increase in interest rates is likely to be transferred to loans in general. The more demand there is for these loanable funds, or just loans in general, for money that can be transferred into loans, the great more pressure that's put on them, that will increase the price of them, the interest rate on them. And so for ordinary firms, private sector firms that need to borrow money to fuel investment, to fund investment, they have to pay more in terms of interest, which can hold back investment which can then hold back aggregate demand, which can hold back growth. And that's the idea here. The government has to spend by excessive amounts of borrowing, then you can expect a crowding out effect, where in the loanable funds market, demand increases excessively, increasing interest rates, market rates for firms, holding back investment and therefore holding back future growth. That's a crowding out effect. Whether you agree or not, well, that's up to you. But this is very much uh, a classical economist's idea against uh, government spending, excessive government spending, especially borrowing fuel of government spending. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time!